Hello there. Today I'm very fortunate to be tasting a wine from the fabulous German producer Selbach Oster. And this is their Anrecht 2021. To give it its full name, it's Anrecht is a plot within the Zeltinger Himmelreich vineyard. This is a Riesling and it's classified as an Auschleser. Now, Zellbach Oster, very famous, quite historic German wine producer. The Selbach family have been vintners in Zeltingen probably for about 400 years now. Certainly there are records of them producing wines in this area back to 1661. And there, are, there are other records of them actually exporting their wines outside their region, so they were obviously quite good at it that people actually learnt about their wines and wanted to buy them from, from outside the immediacy. Today, the custodians of the estate are proprietors Johannes and Barbara Selbach, and their son Sebastian is the winemaker there. The estate's very lucky to have a wonderful collection of fabulous vineyards along the slopes between Zeltingen and Burncastle. So they actually have vines in Zeltingen, in Vellenen, in Grach, and in the Burncastle Abadis too. Not only do they have excellent sites, but so many of their vines are, are really old. They have an awful lot of hundred year old vines. It's predominantly Riesling, about 98% Riesling with a little bit of Pinot Blanc. And these vines are all on their own roots. So none of them are grafted. And that's possible because the soil type here, the, the weathered Devonian slate, means that phylloxera, the aphid that, that otherwise would eat ungrafted vines, is unable to live here successfully. So the vines are safe from its ravages. The soils here are a deep fractured blue Devonian slate. This is a single hillside and the relatively steep vineyards slope down towards the Moselle River, which is relatively wide at this, at the, in this section. In the Zeltinger Himmelreich and in Antrecht, the, so the soils here are a finely weathered Devonian slate and there's a fair proportion of humus in the soil as well. So these are friable soils and they encourage the vines to send their roots down very deep to find pockets of, of soil within the rock from which they can pick up water. As I say, Anrecht is a parcel within Zeltinger Himmelreich. It's a parcel in the lower part of the, of the, of the slopes just above the Zonneneur vineyard. It's the slightly warmer portion of the vineyard that sits just behind the village of Zeltingen itself. And this really is a wine that is an expression, a snapshot of a place at a, po a position in time. The approach that the Selbach family use is minimum intervention in the winery. But what they do with Anrecht is that they pick the entire plot in one go. So rather than going through and selecting the fruit at different levels of ripeness, to produce, say, Spätlesen and Auschlesen from them. They'll pick everything together, so you'll have less ripe grapes along with fully ripe, overripe grapes, probably some Botrytis grapes in there as well. So you'll get, within the wine, you'll get greater complexity in that you've got honeyed Botrytis notes, you've got crisp acidity, less, a less homogenous style and a more of a sort of a spectrum of flavours and characteristics. The Selbachs have three other exceptional sites that they do this sort of thing with. So they've got Rotle, they've got Boma, and they've got Schmidt. And these are wonderfully individualistic wines that are worth looking out for. 2021 was a characteristic, cool climate vintage for the Moselle. So I'm expecting some, some good nervosity, steely acidity coming from this, because actually resulting a Himmelreich tends to be a fairly cool site anyway. The low intervention winemaking practiced here means that fermentation commences using indigenous yeasts and goes ahead in seasoned oak fooder. Thousand litre oval oak barrels. The fact they're old means they give no flavour influence of oak to the wine. They do allow a small ingress of oxygen to the ferment through the staves of the barrel as that progresses. Silbacks don't even use temperature control beyond the fact that the winery itself will probably be getting cool later in the season. The overall ripeness level of the fruit when it was picked was, was Auschleser, but as I say, the vineyard will have given a wide degree of ripeness to produce that aggregation at an Auschlesen level. And pretty much the only intervention that the, the cellbacks make to the wine is to add sulphur dioxide at the, end of, at the end of the process. So let's take a look at the wine, shall we? This is a relatively pale yellow with perhaps a Perhaps the slightest greenish hint, but not a lot. The alcohol on this is not particularly high. It's seven and a half percent. And as I swirl it, 
yes, there will be sugar in this, but it's not particularly viscous. It's not clinging to the glass. There aren't obvious tears there. So let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? It's a medium to full intensity and really layers of aromas there. You have some quite lifted notes of, of blossom, of floral perfume, so delicate blossom, maybe some slightly richer perfume, sort of almost heading towards a sort of a lily sort of note. Coming down through fruit notes, there's certainly there's lime, there's touches of quince, there are hints of stone fruit peachiness that sort of thing and then there are mineral notes as well there's almost a steeliness of a, in the in the aromas but also there's a very slight sort of i'm not really sure whether it's a sherbetiness or a slight sort of gunpowder sort of prickle to to the the aromas which is probably something that results from the yeasts during an indigenous fermentation so let's have a taste Initially, as a richness, a roundness, it's not quite honeyed, but there's almost a sort of a peach and syrup, sort of rich ripeness on the front palate. But then there's a wonderful, clean, fresh lime and then very piercing mineral acidity that's really helping me to salivate down the sides of my tongue there, giving a freshness. And between those two, you almost don't notice but this is medium sweet. I suspect there's probably a higher sugar level than I'm perceiving, simply because there is such a good acidity here. And a lot of the sweetness is sort of slightly hiding behind the ripeness of the fruit. There's a lovely complexity to the fruit. You've got sort of peach notes, nectarine, syrupy notes, but also it's running through a spectrum through sort of quince to liminess, maybe even touches of pear. There's a slightly structured note as well. The wine is at most mid-weight, probably slightly less. But it has this wonderful concentration of rich fruit on the mid-palate. Just over the top of that, there is perhaps also that sort of, at this stage, slightly more gunpowdery complexity coming from the wild ferment. And then on the finish, you see this mineral acidity, hints of lime peel, and then also the acidity is just releasing again some, some of those beautiful floral perfumes. It's a wine that's very complete and balanced right now. It will develop. I mean, this is still a very young wine and the fruit will become more honeyed. You'll probably get wa waxy notes. It will probably seem richer in a few years. And I'm convinced this is a wine that, given its acidity, given its concentration, would age for at least 15 years, probably far longer, becoming quite spectacular in that time. Now, I looked to see if we had an aggregated critic score for this. We don't. But searching around, I did find a couple of critic scores giving this vintage 94 and 95 out of 100. And that seems pretty much spot on for, for the quality that I'm seeing here. And I would add a caveat that given its concentration and its beautiful acidity, it could well exceed that level as it ages. A wonderful wine with complexity, richness, balance, and a long future ahead of it. So thank you so much for joining us. I do hope you've enjoyed the tasting. If you have, I'd be much obliged if you'd press the like button for us. If you wanted to watch more of these tastings, it would be fantastic if you'd subscribe to our channel. We'd really love to have your support there. If you have any comments you want to leave, pop those in the comments box below. It would be great to get your feedback on the wines we're looking at, the tastings we're doing, or anything else that relates to that. If you have any friends you think might like to watch the video, please do pass it on to them. We'd very much appreciate your endorsement in that way. I will leave a link in the notes below for the Wine Searcher webpage for this wine so that you can find out where it's available, what its price is, and using the tabs on that page, you can find all sorts of other background information on the wine about the region, about the producer, about its price history, awards it's won, and anything like that. So thank you again for joining us, and I do hope you'll make some time and come and join us for another tasting in the very near future. Bye for now.